Hello. Computer gods are working for me today, which is a lovely thing. Because last week it wasn't so pretty. I think I had to do last week's video three times. I'm going to wait a few minutes and see if anybody else joins us. Um, What a week. What a week. It's just been crazy. I got my tree up in the shop. I got my tree up at home. It's not complete, complete, but it's almost complete. It'll be finished today. My daughter was able to put up my father's characters, Christmas characters outside. And I got a whole bunch more of stuff to do. I mean, a lot. I probably have uh, three more trees I'm putting up in the house. Not big trees, but little trees. Maybe four. And a lot more decorations. And my daughter wants me to put up my Christmas village this year. So, hello, Miss Stephanie. I don't sleep. That's been my problem forever. I just don't sleep. My brain doesn't shut off. So, if I toss and turn a little bit too much or long enough, even if I have to get up and go pee in the middle of the night, if I'm awake long enough for my brain to kick in, it's hours before I can go back to sleep. Plus, with everything going on right now, it's actually better for me not to, not, not, I'm not saying not to sleep, but to stay busy. There's just too much, you know. I'm the oldest of six. I raised five children, and I'm a military wife, and I've been a caregiver most of my adult life. So I've learned that lesson that um, if I don't do it, nobody else does. So with Chris, my husband, away for most of our marriage, you know, he'd be gone eight months to a year at a time, and I'm very independent. You know, I've learned to do things on my own. So it's just the way I am. I'm tired all the time. <laughs> I do mean all the time because I never get enough sleep. But I've been very, you know, I learned at a very young age with my dad working for my father. You know, I'm very, very self in self um, independent. It's just the way I am. I learned how to use tools at a young age. My first house was a 102-year-old colonial that I bought when I was 24 years old. And I started renovating it all by myself. So I learned things very, very quickly. How are you, Miss Stephanie? I hope you're doing well. I have a lot of fun stuff to show you today. I'm not completely finished with my blocks. I'm just about all done with my half square triangles, but I have, um, I mean, they're all sewn together, but I probably have uh, 40 or 40 more or 50 more that I have to square up. Good. Ugh, I'm so glad I don't have to shovel anymore. Here in Florida, we don't get snow. If we get snow, it melts by the time it lands on the ground. But yeah, before we moved to Florida, I was in New England. So I've lived through the blizzard of 70 and probably a couple of dozen blizzards after that too. So yeah, no, mm -mm -mm. I'm so glad I don't have to shovel. Mm -mm -mm. I can't take it anymore. Okay, let's get started since we've given everybody a chance to come that's going to be here. All right, we're doing flying geese. Now, you're going to have, if you've got the kit, you're going to have one set like this. Isn't it cute? Okay, you're going to have two blocks like this. And I'll show you, I can probably show you better close up. Hold on. Okay, so we're going to have one set like this. 
We're going to have two sets, two blocks like this. The only difference is these two pieces up here are switched. Okay. And then you're going to have a bunch like this. Different. If you're using the kit, you're going to have some beautiful, all these different colors for your flying geese. And this is going to be for this body part. I think it's going to look just like that. Now, they did give you an option. Oh, good, Stephanie. I'm so glad you're doing it. Yeah, I, you got some fabrics from me, I think. Or am I? Yes, I think. Anyway, I got a lot of people that came in today for Indigo Way. I very rarely ever get it done from Bonnie Hunter at the time that... um. She puts the clues out just because I'm just too busy or I like to change my color options. I'm not um, I'm not a red person, so I think I'm going to be changing it and I like to wait until the end. Okay, in the pattern, in the quilt book pattern, you were given two options. One is all black or any other color that you want and the other one is the multicolored version. In the multicolored version, this bottom flying geese, is, flying geese or arrow and the top one are the same color, okay? The only difference is this one here on top and this one here on the bottom, you're going to be using your background fabric, okay? That's the only difference. The rest of these are all going to be having the background fabric color of white. Okay. The same thing if you use all one color. This top one flying geese and this bottom flying geese have, you're using some of the background fabric. So today, without showing you any sizes... I'm going to show you how to put together a traditional flying geese. And then I'm going to show you how my favorite way for flying geese, especially if you're, it doesn't work well when we're using, when we're doing all of these single colors, but it would work really, really well if you're doing, if you have to do more than four or multiples of four flying geese all in the same color fa fabrics. So I will show you that. So do you need a ruler for flying geese? Absolutely not. Okay. Let me get, let me start with that completely right up in front because I don't like to sell rulers that just do one and one thing and only one thing. But the ruler set that I love that the one that I sell is um, Deb Tucker's Studio 180 rulers. If you're a beginner, that's the only set besides a straight ruler that you will ever need. And the reason, yes, it's a, the wing clipper. It is a flying geese ruler, but it can do so much more when you um, pair it with Deb Tucker's technique sheets. Um, and I'm not, let's see, let me share this with you. Hold on. Okay, for instance, this is a technique sheet, and they come already laminated, three-hole punch. It's amazing. What this does is, this one here is she calls um, geese of a feather. So this is showing two separate colors in the top of the geese, but she's got many other options for different, ruler, different um, geese type of things that you can do with this one ruler the technique sheet will give you the finish size that you want for your geese the cut uncut finish size exactly how big to do all of your squares and the idea okay the idea is a lot of people 
have problem with geese. Okay. I don't know why. It's just a matter of facts. Okay. And what they do is they have a problem with is they cut off their points or they don't, they, when they make their flying geese, they don't have enough fabric on the top of the geese to make sure that they don't cut off their points. So for those people, or if like in the, in some projects you need to do a lot in the same colors, Deb Tucker's technique and this flying geese technique sheets um, make everything a little bit bigger. So you don't cut off your points ever. Yes, you have to trim. But if you're one of those people that have to make a ton, <laughs> you know, or you have problems with your points, these rules are amazing. All right. So let's see. First things first. For most of these flying geese, the color, if you're using the kit, you're going to do two separate geese in one color, meaning you're going to have two long rectangles, one in the background, one in your color, and you're going to have two sets of squares, one in your color and one in the background, which gives you, once you're done, this like chevron piece. Okay. Now remember, the top one and the bottom one, you're not using the background for the, the, the bulk of the background. You're actually using your background fabric, okay? Hopefully I haven't lost anybody yet. So first things first, we've got our background fabric and our colored squares, okay? And I've drawn a line from diagonal, from corner to corner on the back of my fabric squares. Okay, hopefully you can see that from here to here. And I've done the same thing on the back of my background fabric squares. Okay. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take my colored fabric square and my background fabric square. And I'm going to lay it over just like this with the line, right sides together, with the line going from the right corner up. And I, to make sure that I have everything the way I, it, and I don't mess up my points, I normally will sew just a thread width on that side of the line, on the far right corner. So we're just gonna go to the right side of this line. And I always, here's the other thing too, and it's not a huge problem, but when you're doing your geese, I always start on the right. You can always start on the left, that's fine. But either way, you want to make sure you're consistent. It may not show up badly, but sometimes, you know, it it's not right or wrong. But if you switch back and forth where you start, it might show up in, in the end, okay? So let's start. We're gonna start on this side. I hope you guys are getting something out of this. I really do. I'm enjoying making this quilt. Um, it And I appreciate you guys allowing me to do a sew along for this because that it's probably the only way I would get to sew this. Yeah. And I didn't quite get close enough the first time. Sometimes it's hard to do this on video. And I'm getting old. I can't see necessarily as good as I would like. Okay. So, there is, oops, the first side.
Okay. Now, I should have used a different color than white thread, but hopefully you can see. I sewed just on the other side of this line. Now what you're going to do is you're going to iron it up. You never, ever, ever, did I say never, want to cut this bulk off until you've ironed it up and make sure you're where you need to be. Because I've done that before. And once you cut it off, you can't put it back on if it's wrong. And I always use starch. Okay. Now, it looks beautiful. <clears throat> if, if I do say so myself. Reason I tell you how I, how I know it's where it should be is it exactly, except, uh, you know, a hair's breadth maybe, matches this corner on the, the bottom fabric. If it was off, like, you know, this, then I would unstitch it and restitch it. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? So see how it's not meeting up here? Then I would unstitch it. But now that I've ironed it over, it's nice and straight. And it works. Now, we're going to use a scissor. Yes, I know. A very old-fashioned thing. I'm all... I, don't, I try not to do too much of that. And all I'm going to do... Let me show you. So all I'm going to do is just eyeball a quarter of an inch from my stitch line and cut off my bulk now there's that there's not any of that extra bulk this is one of the times where you really need to cut it out okay there's sometimes where i don't but with both of these fabrics all three of these fabrics in here you run the risk of it if you have to sew these together like we do here you run the risk of these moving and causing um, a lot of headaches, okay? Now, all we have to do is take our second scar and lay it over on our left side. Make sure it's lining up, top, bottom. And then we're going to sew, now we're going to sew one thread width on the left side of the line. Once in a while. Once in a while, machine wants to eat my fabric. All right. Now I'm going to iron it over. It should match perfectly. Well, I shouldn't say perfect because there is nothing perfect in quilting. I'm sorry. It's just not happening. Lovely. Now we're going to cut off our extra. Okay. Again, I'm just going to eyeball. Cut about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit more. I tend to do a little bit more because I don't want to cut into this bulk over here. I don't know why. It's not It's not a right or wrong on this. It really isn't. What you want to do and how you know that you've done really well is if you measure from the point to here and have at least a quarter of an inch, preferably as close to a quarter of an inch as possible, then you know you did a good job. All right, now 
we're going to do the other side. Now we've already done with the green on the bottom and the white on top. Now we're going to do the same thing with the white on the bottom and the greens on top. And you're going to do two of these, the flying geese, for each one of your colors. So there's a lot of flying geese this next few times. And this will probably show you really well. Let's see. Because it's white on the green. See, I mean, I'm not showing sewing really far off that line. Just a thread width on the other side of that line. What that does is it helps you to iron it up and make sure it's going to stay right where you want it to be and cover your bottom. If you go on that line specifically, sometimes when you iron it up, you're just shy of where you want to be. Meaning, oops. Meaning it would end up sometimes just like that, where you're not completely covering that bottom piece. Okay. So now I'm going to iron it up. Almost done, not too much. After this, I'm going to sew these two together for you and show you how I make sure I don't mess up, cut off my points. And then we're going to do a really quick lesson on how to do four flying geese at one time. Love it. If you're going to do flying geese, anything that cuts down on your time. Now I'm going to put the left side on. Anything that you can cut down on your time on how many you have to do is a lovely thing. Time for me is probably my most valuable commodity. And I do mean that. I have so much on my plate that I have to get done that anything I can do to shave off time and give me more time is lovely. So I'm always looking how I can streamline and make my life easier. Maybe not easier because, let's face it, life is just not that easy most of the time. But anything that I can streamline and save myself time is just perfect. I can't get much better than that. Here, here, here. Yeah, not bad. It's a little hard for me to sew when the camera's right here because I'm always afraid of blocking the view. All right. I have to get some sort of like harness or something that I can wear once in a while. So that's the problem. I don't want to wear a camera right here when I'm talking to you and switching back and forth to cameras, but I have to figure out another way. Unless I'm I'm seriously thinking about putting a camera right here on my desk so that you can really see. I mean, especially when I do in the free motion and things like that and ruler work, I just have to, it's good where it is, the way it is right now, but I just want to dial it in a little bit more, make it a little bit easier for you guys. Because I plan on doing a lot more classes as soon as i get my husband back home from the hospital and hopefully the holidays are over and everything is great then that's what i plan on doing is a lot more videos okay um yes let's do it here okay now you've got your white version and your green version. And you're going to lay them this way and sew them up. This is what uh, my big number one tip is for you. Make sure you don't cut off your points. When you sew, and let me mark this for you. Hold on. 
so that you can see it. When you sew, always keep one flying geese like this on top. Okay. Because you see this X, that's where the seams intersect. So if I sew, and I want to sew a quarter of an inch, you want to be on this side of that X, maybe a stitch or two width away from the X. You don't want to be down here. And it's very hard for you to know where you're sewing if this one is not on top. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. That If you do that, if you make sure you do not sew on this side of the X, you will never, ever cut off your points. Ever. So I'm going to do that now. Oop, lost my thread. that I can. Ay, yay, yay. Once in a while, old machines, they just don't want to work. Okay, see how it's bringing up this scene? I always stop and I stop with my needle down so I don't lose my position. Bring my foot up and make sure my foot goes over it. Learning good seam um, allowance now and management now really does help you later on in life. Even with my beginners, I try to push, making sure your seams are flat as much as possible. That way, there you go. Can't get much better than that. And I can cut off my boys. All right, you're going to be doing that for all of these pretty colors, except for your top color and your bottom color, which are the same. That's why I have two sets of this color from my from my kit. So we just got a lot more of those. Now, I have to show you one of my favorite ways. So we're going to switch things out. And... I'm going to bring in my wing clipper, make some room. Okay. Do you have any questions, Stephanie, from what we've already done? Because you have the kit too, I think, or close to the kit. I have a big square and you're going to go according to the list the measurements that tell you once you pick out your final cut and your finished square um and it also is going to tell you how big to cut these good i'm glad stephanie what i'm going to do is i put i drew a line on the back of each one of these little squares diagonally and I'm going to lay them in opposite corners, right sides to right side. And I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch on this side of the line. Let's see if you can see that. So what I want to do is sew a quarter of an inch on this side of the line and a quarter of an inch on that side of the line. This is my like all time favorite way of doing flying geese if I need to do a lot. What I do is if you have a quarter inch foot with a guide, I don't know if you can see that. I just put my guide right on my line.
Okay. And I'm going to turn it around. I don't even cut my thread. Put my guide on the line and sew the other side. Okay. Yeah. Now, and I guess I should might use my rotary cutter, shouldn't I? Maybe. Nah, we're not. Yeah, I guess I will. All right, hold on. Okay. So I'm actually going to just use my wing clipper as a straight line. So there it is. All I did was sew it on right sides together. From, so the two squares onto the, the bigger square, the two small squares. And I'm going to cut it on my line. And we're going to iron these up. Oh, it looks like a heart. Okay. I'm amazed. I'll tell you, the way the last month or so has gone, I'm amazed. I'm not a little crazy. For those of you who may not know, my husband has been in the hospital twice and is having two of the same vein graft surgeries he's had. This is third of the same vein graft surgery he's had in six months because that vein graft keeps failing for some reason. So he's only been home less than maybe a, less than two weeks from the last one, it's been maybe a week and a half, and had to get admitted again on Friday because it, the vein graft failed. So it's been a little bit crazy trying to get all this stuff done, visiting my husband, taking care of my husband when he's home. So I'm a little crazy to say the least okay now we have our two hearts okay and we're gonna take them and here is another square that i drew the line on diagonally and we're gonna put them in this corner And we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch on this side and a quarter of an inch on this side on both of these. Okay. Again, I, I have my guide on my foot, my quarter inch foot with the guide. So I'm just going to put the guide right on my line. And... Now, then I'm going to put this one in. Here is a little tip. Now, these are going to be bigger than I actually need, and I'm going to square them up. But if you start right in this V, you're going to have a beautiful flying geese. Even though it's bigger, it'll work. All right, now I'm going to lift my foot up. I turn them around. I don't even cut my threads. Remember, this this for me is chain piecing. Same concept. Now I'm going to sew on the other side. And I end up, if your measurements are good, or if you get a lot of practice, and you'll end up right in this little V on this side. I know it's always crazy, Stephanie. Every time I think, okay, we're finally over, whatever it was, something else happens. I'm like over it. I'm all, I'm I'm tired of it being crazy. I'm just glad. I count my blessings and the fact that I know I can do everything by myself. Not that I necessarily want to, but okay. 
it's good to know that I can do it. Now, I was going to cut it with a scissor, but since I'm down here, I just put my ruler on my line. You cut. And put my ruler on the other line. And cut. Now I'm going to iron these up and then we'll go to trim them. They're much bigger than you need. I need a little boring. I have to tell you. I want a little boring in my life. I need boring. It's just too crazy. I really thought after, you know, the last time he was in the hospital, we'd be able to breathe a little bit. But it's just one thing after another. That's my life. People laugh at me because they think I'm joking. But honestly, if it wasn't for bad luck, I'd have no luck whatsoever. None. I keep telling myself I got to count my blessings. And I do. Honestly, I do. But. All right. I'm glad we got an early start on everything because I didn't realize how crazy it was going to be. My tree is up. My two trees are up. Uh, I have a little bit more work. And my lovely daughter put all my dad's characters up yesterday. Because I seriously see after my, you know, my father passed away in April. I wasn't sure I was going to put them up this year. But I'm glad she did. Because we got grandkids coming for Christmas. I got a lot to do. And I'm sure they would be upset if they weren't out. All right. How long to get the new vein? Ooh, that's the problem. I don't want to get yucky on people, but okay, here it is. He did a vein graft using a vein in this arm for his his femoral artery on his leg the first time, and that one failed. The second time was like two weeks ago, and they used um, synthetic vein in that same femoral artery and that failed that's why he's back in the hospital as of friday evening um now they are going to order on monday the cadaver vein um from i guess it's like a, a bank but it takes two days for it to get here so we're hoping wednesday or thursday um and we're hoping and they're going to use that if if it comes in in time because apparently you know, they have had really, really good results with the cadaver leg veins. Um, I just have to hope and pray that the biggest concern right now is to make sure that his leg does not get worse where they have to intervene before the other vein comes in. If they do that, then they either have to take a vein and use the vein in synthetic or combination or whatever Again, which we know have already found. My husband has extremely bad circulation. And they're trying to save what veins he has. Like, you know, this side they took from this side. Now they're ho ho hoping to save this one for his other leg because he's going to need it. He just has, you know, being in the military, he's had a bunch of different things happen. And his circulation is gone. And I do mean gone. So right now, that's what I'm doing. And I'm not trying to get super religious or gross people out, but that's what I'm doing. I'm praying really, really hard that his leg can hold out long enough for the new vein to come in. And hopefully it'll be the last time he has to have this surgery. I mean, literally, his. I feel bad for him. Um, he's had the, he'll have had this cut open, this leg cut open in the same exact spot three times. For the same issue and every time he has the surgery it's not pleasant it's uncomfortable it hurts and it takes that much longer for him to get back on his feet so i'm praying that this is the last time and he can hold out long enough to get this other one and we won't have to do this again because He's had, the, this will be the third surgery, the same exact surgery, the same exact vein, the same exact leg, three times, 
in less than six months. I don't know. I'm hoping that we're done because if not, I think I'm going to have to trade them in for a newer model. <laughs> no, I'm not that mean, but I have to laugh. Okay. Final step. Look at this. We now have four flying geese. Now they're not, they're a little wonky here and there, but that's okay. That's the beauty of this. Oops, I dropped something. That is the beauty of this with this wonderful ruler. And I'm not going to cut all of these up. I'll just show you one. First cut. We've got all these mockings in here. So. See the X? What am I doing here? My brain is fried. Okay, there we go. We square the X up with your point. Trim. Trim. Turn it around. And we're going to put our final here. Trim and trim. Beautiful! Isn't that pretty? And you're guaranteed to get your quarter inch there. And it's great, but it's perfect. Not that there's anything perfect, but that's how you get four instead of in, in quickly, instead of doing them one at a time. Now, it's not going to work for these, but it will work if you're doing one fabric in that body instead of um, all of the colors like we're doing here. You'll get a lot done. Do you have any questions for me? Because that's it. And I do sell these technique sheets in the shop and the wing clippers. I have a bunch of different Studio 180 rules. You do not need a ruler for doing flying geese. I'm telling you that right now. I, I don't sell just flying geese rulers. The idea is with the technique sheet on it, in addition, and there's other ones too, like, um, let me see if I can do one more share real quick if you're okay. If you got a minute, let's see, hold on. Let me show you. Do, 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 do. Hold on, I have to. Um, okay, this is so cool. Hold on. This is what I mean by more than one thing. All right. Oh, cool. crummy. I forgot one other thing. Hold on. Sorry. Hold on. Okay, no, no, wrong one. Ishka Bibble. <laughs> Hold on. All right, see, uh, no. <laughs> Okay, hold on. I promise I'll get this. Um, okay. See this? This is the geese on edge, and it makes this little design here, which doesn't mean like a big thing. It doesn't look like a big thing, but there's all different things you can do with these rulers. It drives me crazy. It's so exciting. Let me show you what it looks like when you
Wrong one. Okay, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm a little bit crazy right now. Hold on. I promise. I got it. There it is. Okay. See this one? This is the geese on edge block. And there's so much you can do with just a few rulers and these technique sheets. So the technique sheets really do make a huge difference. And honestly, that's all you need. You don't need a ton. Sorry. So I'm glad you liked it. If you need anything, you know where I am. All you have to do is send me a message. Um, and I'll help you out as much as possible. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. My weekend is today and tomorrow because I'm not open Monday. So I have a ton to do. I did already put last week's video up on the YouTube page and I apologize. We had major technical difficulties. I had to do it four times, three times. And I'll try and get this video up as soon as possible. As always, I hope you have a wonderful time and a great day. Thank you.